we're going to solve one more uh, trig equation here. So this one is 3 cos theta plus 3 equals 2 sine squared theta. So on this equation, theta appears twice. One place it appears with a cosine, the other place it appears with a sine. So that's going to be a problem. Well, let's try to turn it into, uh, so both places we see either cosine or sine. So is it easier to turn sine squared into something with cosine squared, or is it easier to turn just a regular cosine into sine? So we're going to go for the sine squared, because sine squared turns into 1 minus cos squared. So that's what we're going to be using. So let's write that identity down. So the ID we're going to use is sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. I want to solve for sine squared. Sine squared equals 1 minus cos squared theta. This is going to feel kind of like an identity where you're going to do a substitution. So we have 3 cos theta plus 3 equals 2 times 1 minus cos squared theta. So when it comes to solving, generally you want to get all your variables on one side. So I'm going to get all the uh, cosine thetas on one side. So we'll distribute first. I like my square term to be positive, not negative. So I'm going to add it to both sides. So this gives us 2 cos squared theta plus 3 cos theta plus 3. I'm also going to subtract the two to the other side. So all I did was move those two terms to the other side. Plus 3 minus 2 is plus 1. So are there any algebra questions getting down to this last line? So I'm going to change variables for a minute. So I'm going to let u equal cos theta. Oh, actually, let's go with x. We can use the variable x here. So I just rewrote our equation except I took out cos theta and put in x. So now it looks like a regular degree 2 polynomial. How do I solve this quadratic equation on the right side, this equation in green? So I can go quadratic formula. I could factor, or I could complete the square. So those are three choices for quadratics. I think I chose numbers that we can factor pretty nicely. So let's go for a factor attempt. If it's going to factor nicely, one of the factors will be 2x, the other one will have an x in it, because that multiplied will make 2x squared. So take a minute and figure out what, uh, what values go here, if they're positive or negative, and then just check make sure that it actually foils out to this. And at the end, tell me the 2x values. So I use the zero product property. So two products multiply make zero. That means one or the other or both are zero. 
So I just wrote down 2x plus 1 is 0, or x plus 1 equals 0, and you have your two x values. One for each of the factors. All right, so that was just a Algebra 2 quick review right there. So now we're going to come back to the original. So this is going to factor as 2 cos theta times regular cos theta, and we just get that plus 1 plus 1. So it factors the exact same way, except cos theta is taking the place of u now. So our zero product property So solve for cos theta. Cos theta equals negative 1. Or cos theta equals negative 1 half. So we actually have two equations going on now, not just one. The good news is they're really easy equations at this point. So cosine theta is an x value. So draw a unit circle. So our x value is negative 1 or negative 1 half. So there's three points on the unit circle I need to figure out. One of them is super easy. What angle corresponds to the negative 1 x value? What angle is that? So that's pi. That one's really easy. So pi is one of them. Now there's two. Two more we need to figure out. There's one and the other. Some people find it nice to write down the xy values. It jogs their memory. So if I write down the x value of obviously is one half, negative one half, that was from our original. What y value would be at this point? So that's the root three over two. And the point at the bottom is similar. Same reference angle. This one's just negative root 3 over 2. It's the mirror image. So I got three angles I need to find. I'm going to just pick the negative name for that angle in quadrant 3 instead of the positive way to get there. All right, so we got one angle is pi. What is the angle in quadrant 2 here? So That'll be our 2 pi over 3 right there. And I went the negative way mainly because it just lets me use negative 2 pi over 3, just a mirror image going the other way. So we got 2 pi over 3, negative 2 pi over 3, and pi. Those are our three uh, solutions in the unit circle. Our angle is just theta now. It's not 2 theta or something else like that. So we got theta equals. So I'm going to go small to big, minus 2 pi over 3, or theta equals pi, or theta equals, oops, this should go 2 pi over 3, or regular pi. I have to add 2 pi k, 2 pi k plus 2 pi k. And I also have to say k is an integer. And that's all we need to do to figure out theta. So we got three different possible angles, but we have to add as many rotations uh, to each one. So you may have to use some more serious algebra skills. I won't go past quadratics. You won't have to use a rational zero theorem and factor out a cubic polynomial or something like that. So I'll keep it degree two or less. So we're going to skip the inequalities in 10.7. So we're going to just jump right to uh, the next section. 
which actually I'm going to jump back to 10.2. This is going to be triangle trigonometry and word problems. So when I draw a triangle here, I'm going to draw a Sokotoa. I draw this triangle, I'm going to intentionally not line it up on the x or y axis. So I'm drawing it intentionally kind of skewed, not lined up on either axis. So if I call that angle theta right there, no matter what, hypotenuse should be easy to spot. It's always the side opposite the right angle. What side is this here? Is this opposite or adjacent? So that'll be opposite. And then of course, adjacent is the only side left. I'm gonna redraw the exact triangle that I just drew. The only difference is I'm gonna label theta in the other corner. Hypotenuse stays where it is. What is this side called now? The side I just put that bar on. So that's adjacent now. So our angle moved, meaning this is now the adjacent side to the angle. And of course, you have opposite down there. So it's not always that the angle, or that the uh, bottom side is not always the adjacent side. So it, could, it is relation to where the angle you're considering is located. So I'll draw this triangle in red. Why would theta never appear down there? Yeah, that would be our 90 degree angle right there. So there should be 90 degrees or pi over two not labeled with theta. So do not line up your triangle like that. So we're gonna do what's called solving a triangle now. And solving a triangle, you're going to label all three sides and all three angles. So you're always, whenever you have a right triangle, you definitely know one angle. One angle is pi over two, or 90 degrees. So I want to label all three sides and three angles. How do I get the last side, the third side? Yeah, Pythagorean theorem. So go ahead and apply Pythagorean theorem and tell me that last side right there. It may have some ugly square root in it, and that's OK. When these triangles are not laid out on the x, y axis, you don't need to use, you won't just want to use positives for all their sides. So we're not going to measure them with negative sides when they are not lined up on the x, y axis. So we'll just go with the positive square root 27. So there are two angles we don't know about. I'm going 
to give them names, I'll call the one in the lower left corner theta, and I'll call the other one phi, which is looks like a sideways or yeah, a sideways theta. So we need to figure out theta and phi. How do I relate theta to three and six? So what equation relates theta three and six? So if you ask theta, is three the opposite or the adjacent? So as far as theta knows, is three opposite or adjacent? So we got adjacent. We got hypotenuse, so that narrows it down to which trig function? So we know adjacent, we know hypotenuse. What trig function do we use? Cosine. So we got cos theta is adjacent over opposite. So adjacent is three, opposite is six. So that means cos theta equals one half. What angle has a cosine value of one half? Which one? Pi over three. So pi over two would be the square root three over two. So pi over three is theta, right there. All right, so we figured out theta is pi over three. My triangle is too small to label inside my triangle, so I'll just put a box around it right there. How do I figure out phi? There's t at least two ways to do it. So we can go the angle sum. So all three angles need to add up to pi. That's one way to do it. There's another way that's completely different. So we can use sine, because we know the opposite. Now three would become the opposite side to phi. So I can use sine and do almost the exact same thing I did here, except do it for sine. So let's try that. So we're going to relate phi, three, and six, you could use the square root 27 side, but I recommend use the numbers that are nice. Don't use the ugly numbers if you don't have to. All right, so relate phi three and six. Sine phi is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite was three, hypotenuse was six. So sine phi equals one half. So what angle is phi? That'll be our pi over six. So we got our pi over three, our pi over six. Now, because we could have gone the other route, let's go ahead and test the angle sum. Do they all actually add up to pi? So we're gonna test the angle sum, or check the angle sum. So we should get theta plus phi plus r right angle equals 180 degrees, or pi. So we have pi over three, plus pi over six, plus pi over two. And here fractions suck unless we go with six as our denominator. So we got two pi over six plus pi over six plus three pi over six equals, better go to six everywhere. So pi is six pi over six. So that should be pretty clear with common denominator. Everything adds up to pi over uh, six pi over six. <clears throat> All right, so that's basically how we solve triangles. You just pick what sides you know. Sometimes you know two sides and you want to find an angle. Sometimes you know an angle and one side and you find you're solving for the other side. So we're gonna do some word problems now. So 
So we're gonna make a rain gutter. We're gonna use a 12 inch wide sheet of aluminum. So as we bend at angle theta and are four inches long. So this will look like this rain gutter, the side view is gonna look like this. So each side is four inches long. So that side's four, that side's four. The whole thing is 12, so that leaves the middle part also is four. So that is a full 12 inches right there. You're basically just taking a flat sheet of metal and then bending up the sides a certain amount. Now, <clears throat> how far are we gonna bend them? There's two ways to measure the angle. You could either measure the angle out here or you could measure the angle on the inside. Doesn't really matter which of the two ways. So I'll just measure. Let's measure on the outside because then a zero degree angle would correspond to no bend. And I think that probably makes a lot more sense. So a zero degree angle would mean don't bend it. So we'll measure angle out here. So I want to know what is the total amount of water, uh, area of water that could fit inside of this shape right here. And of course to do that, we're gonna need a height. So let's figure out the height right here. So I'll call that H. And I better make my angle a little smaller so it fits. So that angle is gonna be theta. Of course I have the same thing going on over here. We got another H, another angle theta. So how do I relate H and theta? And of course the other number, the other part we're gonna relate is four. So what trig function relates four, H, and theta? And you can look on either of the two sides. You should have the same relationship. So think about the angle theta. Maybe I shouldn't use the letter H because you're gonna think hypotenuse. Four corresponds to hypotenuse, not H. So let's go with Y instead. So Y is not the hypotenuse. So what trig function relates theta, y, and four? So is it cosine? It's gotta be cosine or sine, because we're using hypotenuse, so that tangent's off the list. Tangent doesn't use hypotenuse. So do we have the adjacent or the opposite side? Opposite. So we got the opposite side, so that comes down to sine. So we got sine theta opposite over hypotenuse. So sine theta equals opposite, we don't know, hypotenuse is four. Here's a good time to make sure your four is not like your y's. Probably doesn't happen too often when you're writing English. All right, <clears throat> so we just related theta to y right there. If you knew theta, if I told you theta was 30 degrees, you could tell me what y was. So we just related theta and y right there. Now I want to figure out what is the total area inside this shape. I think it's called a rhombus. So I'm gonna shade in the area with my highlighter. I can even make it watercolored. All right. All right, so when it rains, the gutter fills up with water and we want to figure out how much actual water, if this thing was like clogged up, how much water 
would be able to fit in there total before it spills out. So do you remember the area for a trapezoid or a rhombus? No, so maybe we don't remember that. All right, let's cut this into pieces. destroy my four, but I think I have to. Do you know how to get the area of a rectangle? How about the area of two triangles? All right, so you can compute the area now that you see as two triangles plus a rectangle. Remember, our height is y. So the height of this whole thing is y. So the rectangle should be pretty straightforward how to get that area. The two triangles are a little more difficult because you're going to need one of these two. They're the same side, but you need to figure out how wide the triangle is. What's the base? Of course, it's the same base as that right there. So figure out how do you write x in terms of theta and 4. You probably use the other trig function we didn't use. So if I use the letters x and y, the area is just written out like this. Two and a half cancel, we got xy plus four y. So are there any questions in, when I leave it in x and y's, why that's the area? We're about to go into, uh, go back to thetas. So I can solve for y right here. If I solve for y, I have y equals four sine theta. So that takes care of y. Now I want to relate x to theta. All right, so use your trig skills and relate x and theta. Are there any trig questions or algebra questions getting there? So this is now a function of theta. So you can write it as a of theta. It's a function that gives you the area if you know the angle theta.
So I'm going to use a graph. Now the graph I'm going to use, I haven't shown you how to graph products really. So there's, we don't have a good way to graph sine times cos plus one. So we don't have a good way to graph that at all. But we're just going to let a computer graph it and then figure out what angle theta maximizes this. So hopefully I'll be connected to the internet. So we had 16 sine, I think we have to use x here, times cos x plus 1. All right, so this graph's a little bit crazy. There are some angles that don't make any sense. So let's think about what angles would not make sense, would be a really bad angle to use. So I think if I have my angle less than zero, this is gonna be bent downwards. So if my angle is zero, this is just one flat piece like this. If my angle is negative, it's even worse, it would be shaped upside down. So it'd be very useless. So don't want to go smaller than zero, and zero is not terribly good. What is the biggest angle we should ever really bend it? We could go a little steeper than 45. What happens after I pass 90 or pi over 2? Yeah, we start losing area because our shape would look kind of like that. So any time we go past pi over 2, we're definitely just going to be getting a smaller area. Not to mention the water's going to like run off the side. Bad for lots of reasons. So we don't want to pass pi over 2. So I'm going to constrain our graph. We said 0. I think we're in radians, so we should be able to just do pi over 2. Um, I could step as pi over, let's do pi over 6. Now, <clears throat> we have a pretty good window right here. It looks like pi over 3 is the winner. Once you, if you go all the way to pi over 2, you actually lose a little bit of area. So it looks like pi over 3 will be the maximum right there. I think Desmos will tell me the approximate, yeah, 20.7 something will be the amount of square units. So pi over 3 will maximize this graph. So I generally won't ask you to maximize things when you hit calculus class. I could ask you to maximize something not based off a graph, but off of doing calculus derivative. Uh, but right now, we don't have access to that knowledge. Well, you can read a calculus book, but we can't cover it in this class. So we're going to solve another triangle, or another two triangles. So we're going to solve this triangle. So I'm intentionally not drawing it squared up to either x or y axis. So 
So we have one angle missing and two sides missing. So you can't use Pythagorean theorem yet because that would relate two sides we don't know. So you have to figure out, I recommend go for that angle first and then figure out the other sides. So I want you to find that angle and then figure out what the other two sides are. I think on this one the sides are going to be kind of ugly numbers. They may have some square roots in them. So they won't work out all nice uh, like the last problem. And you can keep it in degrees if you want to or go to radians. But I recommend whatever you do, go in that units. So if you want to stay in degrees, totally fine. Or if you want to go radians, go all the way to radians and write 30 as pi over 6. Something's not right. So a squared should not be negative. Yes. All right, so I'm demonstrating right now what it feels like to make a mistake. So if you get your side is some negative square root, or square root of a negative, that's not, that should definitely set off alarms in your head. So I mix the sides up up here. So it should be two squared plus a squared equals c squared. And on these problems, you're always going to go with the positive. If you get 
the square with the plus or minus in the real problems, you're always going to count the sides as positive. So we're going to do one more solving of triangles. So you have 3 and 2 as your sides, and then we don't know h, we don't know theta or phi. So probably find h first, that might be the easiest, and then find the angles. And your angles are going to be a little bit ugly on this problem. You should be able to set them up without a problem though. So hypotenuse is just Pythagorean theorem. Nothing too crazy there. The two, find the two angles to set them up isn't too bad. You just have tangent is opposite over adjacent. And you have to just be a little bit careful about uh, which is opposite and which is adjacent. So when I go for theta, my opposite is two adjacent is three. And when I go for phi, they trade places. So my adjacent is two and my opposite is three. How do I solve for theta? I don't know off the top of my head what theta value has tangent of 2 thirds. How do I get this tangent function out of here? So we're going to invert the function. So when I move the function over, it shows up as tangent inverse 2 thirds. So I'm going to move the function to the other side as the inverse. We do the same thing for phi. That's as good as it's going to get for theta and phi. So we can't get it more, uh, we can't find the exact value. You can use a calculator to get accurate within 10 decimal places. Uh, <coughs> but this is as good as we can do right now. When you are answering web work questions on web work, there is no tangent inverse. So on web work, you're going to use the arc functions. So inverse tangent is arc tangent. Inverse sine is arc sine. And inverse cosine is arc cosine. So you're going to use the functions arc instead of inverse. So if you try the little caret negative one, it's not going to work for functions on web work. <coughs> 